If you haven't prepared mentally for an armed robbery or a mugging or a carjacking, your first response may not be a great one. Hi everybody, welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. We actually have three videos today, one from Poland, one from South Africa, and one from Los Angeles. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. First one here, you see our clerk, this one's out of Poland, that this guy is gonna come in and uh, he's gonna kinda, okay man, what's up, whatever do you need? Dude's gonna walk in and go into his pocket and pull out a gun. And then he's gonna threaten the clerk who wants nothing to do with it and goes into a squat there to try to stay away from him. Now, I want you to recognize that he is getting a talking to right here pretty well. And now our clerk is gonna be like, all right, man, whatever you want. And I'm just gonna allow this one to play a little bit so that you can see it where he's turned away from him and now he's emptying the cash drawer for him. Okay, man, here you go. There's, there's all the cash that I have. You take my cash, that's fine. But that is not going to be enough for this robbery. He's like, what else you got, man? Get me into the other stuff. And now the clerk's gotta kinda be like, uh, I don't know, man, what do you want? So now we gotta figure out what the guy wants extra because he's like counting the cash in there and not thinking that he's got enough. So now our clerk's gonna kinda back away a little bit more, go down underneath and now the guy's gonna kinda look, here, man, I've got this thing too. And the guy's like, okay, puts his gun down to put it in his little bag of goodies. And then he's gonna kind of point a gun at him one last time, put his gun away in there as well and back away. That one ends there. Now this next one, you're gonna see the car coming up is gonna get passed by the darker SUV, which is where our aggressors are. And it's the car that has our victims. So now you're gonna see this guy kind of hanging out and watching them. And as soon as this guy comes with a gun in his hand, our, our uh, bystander boogies, the driver boogies, and the person who is uh, was in the car is actually a, uh, you know, the victim that was intended. They apparently stole her wallet and her phone uh, and her laptop bag or something like that, I, I think. And then they jump in their car and they are going to ride off into the sunset as well. Police are still looking for them according to what little news stories that I had. Third one, taco truck in Los Angeles, three o'clock in the morning. These guys prepping their taco truck for the day. When three assailants walk in with a gun and, and put the first guy on the ground, you're gonna see, I just sped it up for the sake of time. You're gonna see him go outside to get another employee of the taco truck, bring him in as well. The guy's like, all right, well, here's my cell phone, man, whatever. Now watch what goes down here as they're gonna sit there and whack that first guy real hard on the ear. He actually ended up needing stitches from getting hit there. They pass the gun off to the other guy, keep uh, you know uh, frisking these guys down, getting their wallets, phones, all that stuff. They apparently thought there was a you know a cash box that they wanted at that point, and they said, "Where's the cash box? Where's the cash box?" Guys didn't have it at that time, so that causes them to get beat up a little bit more. Guys ran off with their phones and wallets, and they're still being looked for apparently. Big oof, very difficult stuff here, but I think some lessons for us to think about. Think about joining us for our monthly online seminars, would you? February seminar is literally free for everyone. It's so important that we want every single person to get in on it. So hit the link in the description, join us for that online seminar and get better trained in deep dives on topics of self-defense. There are opportunities for a counter ambush in the first one and the last one. So, you know, you see our clerk and he needs his vape or whatever and guy comes in. Now watch what goes down here is he is gonna come out with a gun in his hand and then he is gonna switch hands with that gun because he had it on his left hand side. So if the clerk was really paying attention, had a handgun on him, and this is in Poland and in Poland, you can get a concealed carry license if you're a sports shooter. It's really apparently not that hard if you're a competition shooter. But uh, if, if he's quick and he has a sub 1.5 second draw to first shot, he could have outdrawn this guy if he knew that that was what was going on. But of course, the recognition would have been the biggest problem here. Because the guy gets a gun out and up pretty quick and it took him around 1.5 to get the gun up and out. But of course, if our clerk is drawing a gun as well, the bad guy would have had to see that, understand it, and then respond to it appropriately. I'm not even positive that the gun that the bad guy has is, a good, is an actual real gun here. But... If our good guy was good with his gun and saw that gun come out, he did have a chance even there if he was fast enough, which is one of the reasons that I say you need to have the fastest draw to first shot that you can that you can get good accurate hits because you might need it on that day. But instead he decides to comply and I think purposeful compliance is perfectly good and it can be an effective strategy. It doesn't prevent you from being hurt like we saw in the third one today, we'll get there. But recognize that that, that compliance is a strategy and it sometimes will keep you from being hurt and the, and the clerk wasn't hurt here. He gives up the money that's not his money, okay fine. 
But notice here he has other opportunities. Our bad guy looks away. And again, if you have a 1.5 second draw to first shot, then you can, if he turns away and shows you his ear like that, then you can outdraw him and there's literally nothing he can do in order to get the shot off before you do. So this is why when we say the national standard of concealed carriers is a two second draw to first shot, a professional standard is a 1.5 second draw to first shot and a, uh, you know, the black belt standard, the expert standard 1.0. And that's why 1.5 seconds here, there's nothing he's going to do because it takes him about two and a half seconds to look back at this point. So if our guy has a, a decent draw to first shot, he can outdraw this guy all day long, go to work and fill him in. Now then more opportunities abounding, right? Our clerk goes down and goes, oh, okay, man, I've got this other stuff here. I'm not sure exactly what that was. I don't think it was money. But notice that our bad guy puts the gun down. And we see that in a, a large number of videos on the channel. I think it's kind of stupid. And, and uh, you know, it surprises me, but we see it more often than not. So in an armed robbery, even if you're not armed yourself, if you are paying attention, you can take a gun off a counter. And we see it uh, fairly often when you put stuff down, bad guys will go to pick it up. They'll put that gun down to put everything away. And if you're paying attention, you can find an opportunity to counter ambush, grab that gun, and at least drive him off. I'm not saying he had to. It worked out okay in this instance, but it would have ended the threat sooner. Notice he puts the gun in his bag as well. Stupid, stupid. Now, I think the guy that's standing on the sidewalk here is one of our biggest lessons out of the second one. It's pretty good lesson here because he's paying attention to his world. And because of that, he is able to get the heck out of there. Watch him. He looks and turns and that attention buys him time and time buys him options because he books. And as soon as he gets moving, man, as soon as he sees something, he doesn't hesitate. Now, of course, you're going to see him run across the street and not too far from get run over by a car. So you want to be cautious and not just run away from danger, but towards safety. However, I think the very fact of the matter was he didn't hesitate and because he didn't hesitate, he got out of the danger zone very, very quickly. And that was probably one of the keys to him surviving this without getting mugged himself. So that was very good. Now, did he see it? Yeah, look, you can see right there, our bad guy has a gun in his hand. So these are the kinds of robberies that do happen all over the world, happen in the US, happen everywhere where we see the first car come in and go in front of the, the victim car. And then as they're getting out of the car, then the mugging starts and the bad guys jump back in the car. Okay, fine. But notice here that our good guy, you know, our, our bystander is boogieing and he is getting out of there. But note that there's a car you want to watch out. Of course, you know, uh, avoiding an armed robbery, getting run over by a motorist is not a win, guys. You got to do the things that make you safe. And I think he did an okay job of that here. Now then, let's just hustle it through. And again, the victim, we don't get to see what actually happened, you know, on their robbery there. But notice that our bad guys then jump back in the car, transitional space, right? When, uh, the, when that car is stopped, it becomes one because bad guys can jump out of it very, very quickly. Now in our third one, taco truck three o'clock in the morning, right? And you got a guy right here who is all over you with a gun in your face. Notice what our, our uh, worker does here, our victim, is that he kind of instinctively reaches out to try to kind of put his hand in front of that gun. Hey man, don't point that at me, maybe grab it or whatever. And it's a very natural instinct to do that. I'm gonna encourage you to train that either to the point that you are going to then go grab that gun, practice a five Ds plus one and go on that or to squelch that because you don't want him to think that you're trying to take the gun away from him. Fully comply or fully resist. Those are your options. Now, notice no concern for the safety of others here whatsoever. And, and so they're pointing guns left and right. First opportunity for a counter ambush here though, right here. If our clerk was, hey, purposeful compliance and notice the guy with the gun went outside to go get somebody else, but is his partner here in the red, uh, you know, sweater with the Kenny impression from South Park, is he a deadly threat? They all operate in concert, this guy as much as anyone else. And if our, our victim here has a gun, get that out, go to work on that guy. I think would be completely justified to do so. And in so doing now, you, again, you don't have a deadly threat uh, or a deadly threat right on you in the gun in the moment. So you have an opportunity. Of course, you'd have to push that guy off to create the space to do so, but it was an opportunity, but that opportunity will pass by. So again, okay, fine. It does. Dude is going to get his phone out and all that stuff. Compliance doing okay. But notice that compliance does not guarantee that you won't get hurt because they hit him with the, the, the magazine end plate of that, you know, base plate of that gun hard enough that he needed multiple stitches to close the wound in his head. That said, I will say that if somebody hits you with a gun, it is an indicator that they are really unlikely to want to actually use it as a firearm. I'm not saying it's completely unheard of 
for them to use it as a firearm, but it is less likely. And so uh, that actually is not a bad sign, even though it would hurt like heck. You go, okay, I, I, he's probably not gonna shoot me with it, so that's a good thing. Now that said, again, why do you wanna take the opportunity early if you have it? These guys didn't, I get it, but why would you? Because if you don't, you get hit in the face again with the gun and that, you know, that's doing great bodily harm to the guy. He needed stitches. He was in the hospital over this. This is great bodily harm, even using the gun as a bludgeoning tool. So, of course, would I have preferred these guys to protect themselves and not end up in this kind of situation? A hundred percent, yes. So let's learn our opportunities for counter ambush here, what purposeful compliance is and when compliance can help us and when it doesn't as we seek to cover our ASP.